Three Detroit friends, Rocky, played by Jane Levy, Alex, played by Dylan Manette, and Money, played by Daniel Zavato, burgle the mansion of the wealthy proprietors. They start grabbing the nicest things they can get their hands on after Alex turns off the security system. After finishing, they sprint and throw a rock through the plate glass door. Rocky resides with her younger sister Diddy, Emma Burkavasai, their controlling mother Ginger, Katia Bakker, and Trevor, who is also Ginger's partner, Serge Anopko. Rocky assures Diddy that she will secure their escape so they can begin afresh in California. Alex resides with his active police father, who works double shifts at the neighborhood police station and is never at home. Alex searches for wealthy targets to rob using his father's computer links. Money receives a tip about a man living in a home with more than $300,000 in cash hidden away from one of his connections. According to reports, the man is a war veteran who now lives alone as a result of his daughter's passing in a car mishap. Rocky supports the idea because it might be the last heist they ever have to carry out, but Alex isn't on board. Rocky eventually convinces him to give in because he has a fixation on her despite the fact that she is with money. Rocky has a fresh tattoo of a ladybird on his wrist, which Alex notices. She says that when she was younger, her father abandoned the family and her mother held Rocky responsible. She would sob before being imprisoned in the trunk. A ladybird once soared into the trunk and stayed there with her. She claims that after having it colored in California, she won't ever tattoo her body once more. The three discover that the man, Stephen Lang, is blind as they stalk his home which is the only one on the street that is still inhabited because it is in a slum area. Alex believes that robbing a helpless man is wrong, but money counters that just because a person is blind doesn't make them a saint. Then the man's vicious Rottweiler dog charges the vehicle door, startling the friends. The three start the heist that evening. The companions proceed to the man's residence. Money gives the dog a drug to make him pass out so they can enter the home safely. Rocky enters first and turns off the security system through a tiny bathroom window. Money makes fun of Alex for having a crush on Rocky while her companions wait for her. She comes back and unlocks the back entrance. When Money ascends, he discovers the blind man dozing off in front of the TV. As he stands up, the blind man hears a sound. He simply switches off the TV and goes back to slumber. To guarantee that the man won't hear anything, money gasses the space. The group of three discovers a locked basement entrance. They anticipate finding the man's cash here. The blind man is forced to descend to the ground floor as money begins to smash down the door. Before deciding to draw a gun on the man, money begins talking and declares that he doesn't want trouble. Money raises the gun to the forehead of the blind man as he moves forward a short distance. The man carefully approaches and takes the gun out of Money's hand, pinning him against the wall. Money is questioned by the blind man regarding their number in the residence. Money claims that he is the only one there and begs the other guy to let him go. The blind man lets go of Money, but not before shooting him in the neck and cranium. Rocky hides in the closet as he lowers Money's body to the ground. A safe holding his money is opened by the man after he enters. As he departs, Rocky notices the number 2978. After the blind man begins to lock all the doors and windows, Alex goes to locate Rocky. They determine that all they need to do is enter clandestinely through the cellar and exit through the cellar entrance. Rocky first unlocks the safe and places all the cash in her purse. They move towards the cellar, but the individual comes out. He clutches money's gun while the two remain silent. When someone's phone rings, he quickly discharges a shot. The man drags Money's corpse outside as Rocky and Alex go downstairs. Rocky is shocked by a woman, Francisca Torosik, who is chained to the wall in the basement. Before the woman holds up a newspaper story, Rocky and Alex are terrified and on the verge of walking away. It is revealed that Cindy is the person who unintentionally killed the blind man's daughter and was exonerated. She is set free by Rocky and Alex, who then carry her to the cellar entrance. They open it, but the blind man is already there. Cindy is killed when the gunman shoots and hits her in the face. The guy learns that he shot Cindy while Rocky and Alex are hiding. He sobs and screams in anger over her dead corpse. 
Alex decides to attempt to get back to the front door after taking the man's keys. The blind man turns off the lights in the basement, leaving everyone in complete blackness as he and Rocky make their way back upstairs. As the man fires the pistol, Rocky and Alex search for one another. Prior to Alex calling her name, Rocky was about to approach the blind man. Alex is caught by the blind man, who attempts to shoot Alex, but his weapon is empty. He is caught when Alex lowers a bookcase on him. Rocky and he sprint upstairs. Alex uses a hammer to keep the door from opening. When he and Rocky attempt to enter the door, they discover that the dog has awakened and is prepared to attack. The canine is contained in a room as they flee from it. Sadly, the blind man emerged from the cellar and now assaults Alex. He looks to impale him with garden shears while repeatedly punching him in the face. Rocky is then knocked unconscious as well by him. Rocky awakens chained in the same location as Cindy in the cellar. She informs the blind man that his daughter won't return if he does this. That's not completely true, he claims. He would have released Cindy after she gave birth if she hadn't been impregnated in order to give him a child to make up for the one she murdered. He holds Rocky responsible for the death of Cindy and his future child. He rips a hole in Rocky's trousers and takes a baster that is loaded with a sample of his semen. He gets ready to conceive Rocky, but fortunately Alex got up and snatched a hammer. He frees Rocky by giving the blind man a blow to the cranium. The guy is handcuffed to a pole. She begins to kick him before forcing the baster down his neck. Since the man could easily inform the police that Rocky and Alex broke in, they choose to leave him alone and refrain from calling the police. To exit, the two go back upstairs. The blind man has risen up when they open the front door, and he shoots Alex to death. Just as the man opens the door for the canine, Rocky bolts out. Rocky attempts to get into Money's car before the dog catches her as she runs back there, but she left her bag outside. Rocky tries to trap the canine inside the trunk by opening it so she can escape. She goes outside to collect the money after her scheme is successful, but the blind man appears and knocks Rocky out once more. Rocky is dragged by the blind man back to his home to complete his work. Rocky gets a boost of optimism and confidence when a ladybird flies onto her palm. Rocky grabs the key to activate the alarm, which causes the guy to become distracted. She seizes the crowbar and repeatedly hits the blind man over the head until he tumbles into the cellar and is shot in the side by his pistol. Before the police arrive, Rocky takes the money and leaves the home. Rocky and Diddy are currently waiting to begin their new lives at the Detroit airport. The blind man was discovered alive, only two burglars were reported to have broken into his house, and Rocky had killed both of them, according to a news story Rocky later saw on television. When Rocky starts to feel uneasy, she takes Diddy with her and never looks back.